Hi, everyone. I'm Christine Harrington, the Savvy Sales Lady. And I'm Simon White, sales trainer and sales performance coach from the UK. Today, Simon, I think we're dedicating this video to account management and you are the real expert in this area. So I'm going to let you just take off with it. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. So account management often overlooked by companies or, or not really given the, the focus it should have. Um, so what is account management? Well, account management, it's post sale. So once the deal has been done, that's when account management comes in. Um, but what happens if you don't have account management? Well, the salesperson has sold the deal. They've made promises to, to that, that new client. They've explained what's going to happen, et cetera, et cetera. And, and then the salesperson has done the deal and the salesperson more often than not is off on, on the next deal they're looking to. So that new client has come on board is there anyone really looking after them? Is there somebody ensuring that all the KPIs have met, that they're doing all the right things? Is there somebody looking for ongoing sales, upsell, cross-sell, etc.? So that's what account management is, in essence. I have a question. Go. <laughs> I had my hand up. <laughs> I, I saw it was up, and I thought, oh, well, I don't know. Go carry on. <laughs> um, is is account management that? role is that role popular with companies in the UK yes okay it yes. is here too and would you explain what KPI means key performance indicator so that would be you know whatever that figure is so um, it might be um, yeah, it, it's simply a figure. So yeah, if you were doing some cold calls, you'd say, well, what about KPIs is we've got to do 100 cold, cold calls a, a day or something. So it, it is it's just that yeah, key performance indicator. It's, it's, a, it's a figure that indicates how successful something is going to be. Yeah. For new people in sales, I wanted to make sure that they understood. OK, what that so, was. <laughs> yes. we do. We, yeah, we do quite well not using too many acronyms on these videos, but right, um, right. But, but account management isn't a, a, is, a, is a selling function potentially, but it's not the sales function. So there's two, two, two objectives of, the, of an account manager. Um, number one is you've got to keep the client. If you do nothing else, you've got to look after that new client and keep that client. But ideally, you'll do more than just keep them. You'll grow them. So you'll grow that account over, over time. You might grow, you know, they might buy more from you. You might have cross-sold to them. You might have upsold to them. Um, you might see if you can work or get referrals and introductions to another division of theirs or other departments. You might ask them for referrals to people in their trusted network. Um, you're certainly going to ask them for case studies and testimonials and things like that. So within account management, you've got two roles. Keep the client and grow the client. They're the two things really that you need to do. Of course, you've got to protect them from competitors swooping in, but they're the two things. Keep them and grow them. Um, and all this happens after the first sale is made. I say the first sale because you're going to try and do other selling uh, activities going forward, but they're, they're, that's, that's how it starts. Account management, keep them and grow them. You know, that's, that's what you do. You know, my experience with account managers, because at, most of my roles have been as an account executive, and I always had an assigned account manager um, for my book of business, Simon. And a lot of times in talking to them, they never saw themselves as a salesperson. <laughs> they never saw their role as sell, uh oh, my cat. <laughs> uh, they never saw themselves as um, upselling or, or growing the business. So uh, what tips do you have for those account managers that may be struggling with this, that their only role is to be an account manager? Yeah, so often account managers um, don't really manage the account as such. They, they tend to just be administrators. They just move paper from one area, one place to another. Uh, and that's the bare minimum. That, that, that isn't the, even the bare minimum. That's just an administration. Um, so the account management absolutely needs to be proactive. And that is a key part of, of everything we do in business. And you've got to be uh, pre, uh, proactive in, in everything you do. So there's five steps, minimum of five steps I cover in my half day 
workshops on account management. So the first thing is as an account manager, you're unlikely just to have one account to look after. You might be, but normally you're gonna have a, a few and it could be half a dozen, it could be 20, it could be 50. You can might have loads of different accounts to look after. So the first job you do is you need to categorize those accounts. Who are your A accounts, your B accounts and your C accounts? And what criteria are you gonna use to, to put them into, into those categories. And it, it might be based on how much they're spending with you or what profit margin or how much it costs you to service that account. Lots of different uh, criteria you might use, but in basic terms is you've got some A clients, you've got some B clients and you've got some C clients because you are gonna treat them all slightly different because you can't treat them all the same because there isn't enough hours in the day to do so. So an A client, and I, you would never use such simplistic um, criteria as I'm about to, but this will just give an idea. An A client might be somebody who's you've got a really good relationship with and there's an opportunity to grow. That might be an A client, or they might be spending really good money with you and there's an opportunity to grow, for example. A B client might be they're spending good money with you or there's an opportunity to grow. And a C client might be, none of the above they're not spending good money you haven't got a very good relationship and uh, and there's no room to, to to grow them so you'll treat them all all three of those differently because an a client you might speak to once a week or once a day or once a month or whatever but a c client you might only speak to every three months or something so it depends on on, on what's required for, from that so the first thing I, I always say to my clients when we do the workshops we those are paper and post-it notes all over the tables right Write down all your A clients, agree it internally, all your Bs, all your Cs, potentially even some Ds in there. Right, let's work out how many of each you've got. And you might only have a few A clients, but they're probably spending more money per head than, than the C clients. You might have a lot more C clients than A's, but the C's aren't spending a lot of money with you, for example. What's a D client then? <laughs> um, ditch them. Dead? Dead? <laughs> ditch them whatever yeah yeah so you might have multiple categories uh, a lot of that might come down to profit volume risk of working with them that kind of stuff as well so the first thing to do so if you're new to a company as an account manager or you're a company thinking you need to get some account management processes in place first thing understand what the objective is keep them and grow them the second thing is go through all your clients and work out are they an a b or c or potentially also d so that's the that's the the first job is to categorize. The second job is to look at all of those A's and potentially the B's as well, and maybe even the C's, but certainly the A's, and create an organogram, an organizational chart for each of those um, key clients, your, your, your key accounts. You know who you deal with in that company, which might be one person, or it might be two people or, or whatever it is, but who do they report to? And who, do the, who reports to them? And who sits on the same level? Because what we have to be very, very mindful of in, 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 in business is you can lose a client very quickly if your contact leaves, if they get sick, mm -hmm. if they get downsized, if they just leave for whatever reason. You don't want to leave the, the, the future of that account in just one person's hand. I have certainly done this in a past life. I, I've lost a client where, you know, you, you, you've got this new this client on board, they leave and all of a sudden somebody else comes into that job. They don't have a relationship with you. They've got their own uh, supplies that they want to work with. So do an, or, or an organogram, understand who your, your contact, who their boss is, who the boss's boss is, start to, 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 to write this out. Never ask the company to send you an organogram. Literally sit there with a piece of paper and plot out the people you know. And then when you have your next meeting with that client, show them the piece of paper and say, look, I've been trying to plot out, you know, how the, how the, you know, the, the organization looks. They will be flattered that you're going to that much effort. Ask them to fill in the blanks. That's how I do it. And I'll literally pass it across the table and say, just before we finish today, you mind filling in a few of these blanks for me. And they'll go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'll tell you stuff that you shouldn't necessarily even know. They'll go, oh, well, we're just about to set up a new division. or We've got this new department. Or, you know, Mary's leaving, but Joe's coming in. Whatever it is, it, it's, yeah, so an organogram. It's a great way of, 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 of leading you into an opportunity where you can ask for referrals into other people, other departments. 
think of it very much like a, a three three legs of um of a stool you've got three legs on a stool it's nice nice and robust it's not going to fall over but if you've only got one or two legs it's going to be a bit wobbly right same with the same with the client you don't just want one point of contact you want two three four five as many tentacles as you can get into that organization it will help with cross selling will help with referrals will help you grow that account now will you ask for an introduction since you're there Yes, I will. Yeah. Okay. Once, we've, once, we've, once we've got in and started working with them and proved, proved ourselves, we've, right. built that rapport, we've built that trust, then yes, absolutely. And I always use the phrase, interestingly you should say it, I would ask them for an introduction, not a referral. I want them to introduce me to the person. I want them to, to at the very least, on an email to say, hi, Fred, I'd like you to introduce you to Simon, who's doing some great work for us. I want an introduction. I don't want a vague referral where they say to me, oh, yeah, I've mentioned you to Fred. He'll get in touch if he's interested. I want them to introduce me. I want them to actually put us together, to actually <laughs> match make us, you know. Yeah. But yeah. So that's, that's what that's why I ask. So I always choose my words. I, I don't know if it's the same in the language in America, but I always ask for an, an introduction not a referral in, in that in that context. I, I do too. I yeah. think oh, okay. that's key. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, it's amazing how some of these, we've, we've done a video on it before, how little, certain words make such a big difference in, in sales. Yeah, yeah. Um, the next thing I would say, so we, 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 you know, we're working through this list of the fundamentals of account management. Next thing, and it's, it's quite an old thing to do, it's so important, is to conduct regular SWOT analysis of, of, your, of your main accounts. So a regular what? SWOT. Do you know SWOT? SWAT? Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, oh. and threats. Have you come across that before? That one. No. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, big, in, big in the UK. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And you just... What? SWAT, <laughs> yes. And you just do it as a, those, those four areas, but for all your main accounts. So what is our strength? And it might be we've got lots of experience in that sector. The weakness might be we've only got one contact and we need to we need to get more contact names. The opportunities might be that they've got multiple other divisions that could use us. OK, the threat might be um, that they've got a new chief executive has just joined the business. What it can anything like that. But it's don't do it on your own. Don't do it in isolation. Work with uh, the other account managers in the in the business and actually just sit there and spend uh, you know an hour or two once every few months once a quarter maybe and sit down and go through all your a clients and okay what are the opportunities we've got with this business what are we doing to 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 make the most of those opportunities but yeah swat strength weakness opportunities and threats and just do that for all your key accounts but don't do it once review it every quarter and but don't do it in isolation because sometimes we become quite blinkered do it with colleagues who can maybe ask you some challenging questions to really get you to think about it. But yeah, that, that's the, another key fundamental that I would, uh, or I always cover on my, on my courses. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to break in, Simon, and do a commercial. So sales leaders, sales managers, um, uh, sales, uh, what's the new buzzword, uh, business yeah. development managers. Um, if you need training for your account managers reach out to simon and you'll see his website um below so be sure and reach out if you want some good valid training um, from simon now he's giving us just a brief overview today his his half day workshop goes into much more but contact simon for account management training there now, Excellent. Simon, I'll leave it back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> one of my uh, the quotes that I, I use, I, I always end up saying this on every course I do, whether it's account management or, or LinkedIn training uh, or, or telesales, it's this. If you don't have a plan, you can only react. And when you're reacting, you're not in control. I would have said it to you before many times as well. I say it all the time to people. And with account management, it's really, really important. So have a plan. So once you know who your A's, your B's, your C's and your D's are, lay it out in an Excel sheet. So you've got um, the, the, all the dates for that year, let's say, or that three, six month period. And plan out what are your touch points going to be? 
So it might be in week one, um, the sales per or week zero, the salesperson is going to introduce the account manager to the new client. In week two, you're going to do this. In week three, you're going to do that and actually plan it out. So all your account managers in the same company are all doing things in a uniform way. So you always know that on week 18, all your account managers are always going to ask for a testimonial and a, and a case study. You, you know that on week 25, they're going to ask for an introduction to another, whatever it is, and just plan out all those touch points. So think yeah, it's, it's yeah. what you're doing is installing an Im implementation plan for yes. a new client. Yes, absolutely. Instead of just kind mm -hmm. of winging it and checking in um, every once in a while or, or, re or reacting when a problem occurs, what you're doing is being proactive instead of reactive. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. And funny enough, I was covering this very point this morning with one of my coaching clients. And I said to her that she could use this when she's actually selling. So when she's selling to a new company, actually explain what happens when they become a, when they become a client. This is how we onboard you as a new client. This is who's going to look after you. This is what happens. And actually explain it. And it just takes any doubt out, out of that prospect's mind. And they know that they're going to be treated just as well when they're a client than when you wanted them to be, to be a client. And uh, you're, you're explaining to them um, what to expect. Yeah, absolutely. A client, people don't like the unexpected. Mm -hmm. um, so if you explain what's going to happen, you know, and certainly if you've got a good account management process in place, you might actually introduce them to the account manager before they become a client. They might say, you know, you know, we'll let, on our next uh, Zoom meeting, uh, when we I know we're going to discuss X, Y, and Z, just at the end of that meeting, I'd like to introduce you to, to Frank. And Frank's going to be your account manager if you decide you, you're going to work with us. And I did that. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, Simon. Um, as an account executive, I did that all the time with my account manager. She was my partner. And, yeah. and uh if I was um, selling a very difficult um, benefit plan that required them to actually meet who they were going to be working with, I would pull the implementation team in on the call. I would pull in my account manager with me to go on the call uh, and, and work with me as a partner. So they would know who, who they are and what to expect. Yeah, fantastic. Absolutely. <clears throat> and the, fin the final thing I, I would say as a, as a fundamental, there's lots of other things you can do in account management, but just the final fundamental is review meetings. Oh, it, yes. It, it is to put into that plan how often you are going to review with them. You might not call it a review meeting, but how often are you going to have a formal get together with them, put it in? You know, it could be done via Zoom or Teams or whether it's, it's in person. And the one thing I, I, I said to, to my client this morning when we were coaching on this very point, I said, before you have that meeting, because she's got some account management meetings this week, before you have, uh, have those meetings, go and talk to your finance department and just see, do they owe you any money? Is there any outstanding problems? Go and talk to your delivery team. Is everything going as it, uh, uh, as it should? Or have there been any problems that you aren't aware of? Make sure you talk to all of these other people in the organization. So when you go to that meeting, you are prepared. Be prepared for the unexpected in that case. Send the, the client an agenda in advance, at least a week in advance, and say to them, oh, you know, I've drafted this agenda. Is there anything you would like to add to it? Because that is your, your warning. If they say, yes, I want to cover this, that, and the other as well, now you can prepare. You, you don't just turn up to a meeting on, on, uh, online or in person and wing it. Have time to prepare. So send them an agenda in advance and go and talk to all your, all your key staff who, do, who deal with them in advance as well. So you can just be prepared for it. Um, you, said a... something, you said something important, Simon. Um, well, everything you say is important. <laughs> but <laughs> one thing stuck in my mind. Um, when you are um, talking to people within the company that you work for, the corporation you work for, 
those people, those department heads, those uh, employees are internal clients to you. Yes. Their clients as well as those that are outside the corporation. So you're absolutely right. You have to not only develop relationships with the new client, but also develop key relationships within the company that you work with too, because you're servicing them as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Really, really good point. Yes. Yeah. And there's uh, one, one really great question that uh, one of my clients a few years ago shared with me. So uh, shout out to Andy who, who shared this with me. It's a really great question. So when you have a review meeting with, with a client, if you ask them how, they think the project's going. They'll tell you what they think. But a really great question, I, I, I always say this now, Andy told me this maybe, I don't know, three or four years ago, but it's a, it's a brilliant one. I always cover it on my courses, is to say this to, to your contact. How is the project being perceived internally? Oh, that is a good question. And that's yeah. when they can, you, you in, and then, then obviously, like in sales, you, you then do quiet and listen to what they, they, they say. And that's when they can say, well, you know, Derek thinks it's, a, it's going really well, but, but, you know, Sarah isn't so sure about it. It, it. it gives them an opportunity to tell you things that the, then you can, you know, deal with as appropriate. So how is the project being perceived internally? Great I question. Yeah, yeah. So there we have it. They're the, they're the fundamentals of, of account management. Look after the client and grow the client. Categorize um, all, all, your, all your key accounts. Um, put an organization plan uh, chart, create that, and, and do that in collaboration with the client. Help get them to help you map it out. Do a SWOT analysis, okay? map out those touch points and stick to it and make sure all the other account managers do. And when it comes to review meetings, be proactive, speak to internal people, send an agenda in advance, collaborate with the, the client on the agenda. And that, that if you can do all of those things and you do them consistently, then you've got a, the foundation of a really good account management plan. Thank you, Simon. That is absolutely helpful. And account managers out there and sales leaders, Get a hold of Simon for training <laughs> for account management. Now my dog's walked in. My, uh, my two cats have shown up today and now my dog. So remember this, everyone. Sales is a journey, not a quick trip around the block. Simon and I will see you on the next coaching video. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody.